It is Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well as we are on the final day of May. Really? May 31st. I don't think there's a month that has 32 days in it. So, yes, this is the final day, man. <laughs> it has been going quickly, hasn't it? It seems like as you get older, the days get oh. longer, but the years get shorter. What's up with that? Tell me about it. Wait till you get to my age, and then you just really crank up the treadmill a few miles per hour on that bad boy. Woo! Woo! Hey, uh, let's start <laughs> with a team that we haven't talked a lot about. The Arizona Diamondbacks, Zach Gallon, six more shutout innings last night. Uh, Diamondbacks remain just a game and a half back of the Dodgers out there in the West. We are now more than two months into the season. So would you be more surprised if the Diamondbacks made the playoffs or missed the playoffs? I think at this point of the season, with all the information that we have, we've seen this team play, we know what they can do. I'd be more surprised if they missed the playoffs. I mean, they have the second best record in the National League. That's insane. Coming into the season, it'd be hard for anyone to say, hand up, that they had this team performing the way they performed. This offense right now, sixth in runs in all of baseball. Sixth in runs in all of baseball. With, you know, a cast of characters that aren't, necessarily household names but does it matter they've been able to do it in a bunch of different ways they have the high-end pitching they're about to get man supply back to you know help fortify the back end of the bullpen which is great for them i think if you're just talking okay they may not win the division and whoever wins the central is going to get in there and whoever wins the east the braves are going to win the east in my opinion so there's three teams right there but that means they just got to be above the phillies which i i think they're just obviously playing better than the mets the Padres, and who else? I think they can do it. The way this team has performed, right now I would be shocked if come September they were firmly in a playoff position or like hanging on and definitely in the race, in the discussion. That's how good this team has played this year. Uh, they have been really fun. And, you know, I've known Steve Berthium, their play-by-play guy, for a long time. He and I worked 25 years ago at CNN Sports Illustrated. We were both hosts there. And I remember seeing him last year when they were in Cleveland when I was there. So I went up to him and I said, you know, it looks like your team's kind of fun. He's like, we have a bunch of young guys that they are fun. He goes, it hasn't been fun the last few years here. It's been really tough to kind of watch them go through this whole process. And Tori Lovello's done the best job he can to kind of keep things together, but they haven't been exciting. They haven't been good. And that's a terrible combination. You can be bad young and exciting and and kind of see what might be at the end of the rainbow kind of like the royals were at the beginning of you know like the 2010s when all those guys came up together you could kind of seeing it getting to a crescendo but i feel like that's what's happening here right and you sprinkle in some veteran leadership some of that magic dust like longo hit one 450 plus last night which was awesome. yeah yeah he was like ah, i didn't know i still had it in me but when the roof's open it'll fly out to center field um Corbin Carroll is an all-out stud. He got them a run on his own. Walk, stolen base, stolen base, sack fly. And then he hits a – he clicks you in the game later as well. So he's he is a $100 million ball player. He's awesome. They steal bases. You mentioned about them being sixth in runs or whatever. They're top six to eight in a lot of categories. Yeah. A lot of categories. OPS, stolen bases. They can manufacture runs when they need to. Now, here's the one area, Ploof. I think they're going to have to make a trade for some sort of established starter because I I just don't like what is behind their top two studs in gallon and Kelly. They have the prospect capital do it. Obviously the payroll situation's fine. They can, they can go get someone. I think the problem is a lot of people are looking for starting pitching. So to say you want to go upgrade, is one thing, but going and getting your upgrade is another thing. So it's just going to depend on, you know, I mean, I think where they're at right now, it's a no brainer that they might just have to meet a team's demand. Uh, in another mm-hmm. scenario, they might not be willing to, but I think that they put themselves in a position where they're like, okay, like we might have to give up a little bit more because we're in the second best record in the National League. They're tied with the Braves right now. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, a couple other shout outs offensively to some guys. Lourdes Guriel, since the trade, has been phenomenal. He's been great. Perdomo, shortstop, has done a remarkable job. 
Uh, Moreno behind the plate has been awesome. Yep. Cattell Marte might not be back at his top five MVP season that he had a few years ago, but he has certainly had a resurgence as well. They've been a lot of fun to watch. Good for them. All right. Another team uh, in a West, American League West, that has kind of surprised us a little bit, maybe. The Texas Rangers. Regardless yes. of the outcome of Wednesday's games, they will enter June as the first place team in that division. Now work with me on this one. Two yeah. big ticket guys have already missed significant time. So I'm going to give you a choice. You can either have Corey Seager for half of the team's remaining games, about 55 or so would be half, or Jacob DeGrom make 11 more starts this season. Which one are you taking? That's tough. It's tough because you know where I usually lie on this. You know, I want my starters uh, to be there, to be healthy, and to give me those 30 starts. You're telling me I only get 11 more starts out of Jacob DeGrom and 55 games for Seager? So here's the deal. We're playing the fun game. You don't like get the other guy at all. But you can No, get, I know. You, you get either Corey Seager for 55 games or Jacob DeGrom for 11 starts. And the other guy doesn't exist. I think you got to go to Grom in this situation. I mean, look, I know what Corey Seager can bring to an offense. And right now, 952 OPS, like he's been great since he's been back. But this team was scoring runs when he wasn't there. Like they were, they were doing it already. They, I mean, how many guys do they have with an OPS plus over 100? A lot, like 10 or something like that. Uh, DeGrom to me is such a difference maker. And, you know, they're, 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 Pitching staff has been great. I mean, Eovaldi's been great. John Gray's been great. Um, Andrew Heaney has figured it out. He's had some really good starts as well. But I think I'm always going to lean starting pitching. So I'll take DeGrom here. Although I think it is closer than I – when you first sent me the question, I was like, oh, DeGrom, no no, no uh, contest. But I think it's a little bit closer than that. I'll still say DeGrom just because those 11 starts – you know he's going to be good. There's not a there's not an instance. If you're telling me he's going to be healthy for those eleven, he's going to be dominant, and that's that gives you a good chance to win those eleven ball games. Okay. Uh, do you know what the Rangers' record is in his six starts this year? Well, he's two and zero, oh, so I don't know what else they do for those four games. They won them. So six and zero. Okay. They won every one of. Yeah, his you're starts. going to be in them. That's for sure. That's the thing is you're going to be in them. And if you look at the rotation, like Martin Perez hasn't pitched the way he did last year yet. So you're still kind of waiting for him to get going. Dane Dunning. I don't know what we can get out of him for a full season in that fifth spot. John Gray has been very good this year. Uh, Evaldi's been out of this world, like see in Seattle mid July. Good. Um, Heaney, you mentioned. But, yeah, if I can have that stud where every five days I know I'm going to be in it and I'm going to have it, I'm going to give my team a chance to win 90% of the time, I have to take that. The other part of that equation is that Ezekiel Duran played an outstanding shortstop for them. He has had a great, great year. No matter really where you put him, the guy has hit this season. Um, I have to admit, I haven't seen him play the field enough to know what he does there. I know that Seeger is certainly dependable there. Um I can't believe I'm saying I would take the crown over Corey, like 11 appearances by one guy over 55 for another, especially what Seager does, man. He is mashing the shit out of the baseball. Yeah. You can't really go wrong. Just think that there's enough guys to keep the offense going right now. I'm looking yeah. at their baseball reference page and I have it sorted by OPS plus take away Mitch Garver because he's only had 22 plate appearances. Travis Jankowski has 87 plate appearances, so I'll keep him in there. Uh, there is 10 guys with an OPS plus over 110. A lot. They can mash, man. Yeah. They really can mash. So I think the, I think yeah, the correct answer one. is DeGrom. Mm-hmm. And by the way, it's a shit. I, I felt bad writing the question because I, I hate, but I was like, ah, it's different. Let's just roll. You it. love making me choose people and then get me in trouble on the internet. That's what oh, you love. Oh my God. By the way, holy smokes, did you get fried yesterday? Sorry about that. No, the only I people that fried were... me had, you know, uh, rep BX, like Yankees in their freaking profile. That was the only <laughs> people that roasted me. Like, you know, you're actually winning the argument when the only people 
roasting you are people that have like the Yankees tag in their profile on Twitter. It's like, okay, yeah, I know where you stand. I've been getting all, I've been getting that from a lot of sit uh, from one city in Texas <laughs> lately. So yeah, I understand what you're saying. All right, baseball today to listeners. You ready to find your fandom? Of course you are. The good folks over at Foco.com, they are here to make sure that the answer to that question is a big, bold yes. Foco, officially licensed by Major League Baseball and the MLBPA. Wide range of MLB products. Everything that includes the straw hat that I'm wearing, I'll be busting it out this summer, and Brady will use it when he's a camp counselor at a baseball camp. Ploof, uh, what's his name again? What's that uh, mascot? TC Bear. Yeah, TC Bear. I've got Slider, so they've got great uh, mascot bobble. Slider is the Thanks. Guardians mascot's name. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I he's been, um, yeah, he's been around forever. He actually blew out. I knew the guy that was inside the Slider mascot costume. There's a guy inside in ninety five. What do you think? It's robotic. I'm just kidding. Anyway, he fell off the wall in the ninety five World Series and tore his ACL. <laughs> Let's get back to the uh, whole idea of FOCO. They've got bobbleheads. They got straw hats. They got loungewear. They got floral shirts. Everything you need to make your summer great. It's never been easier to find great gear. It's never been easier to find your fandom. You put two great tastes that taste great together. FOCO.com has everything you need for 162 games and beyond, whether you're taking in the action at the ballpark or you're just lounging around the house. So if you're ready to take your team spirit to the next level, head on over to FOCO.com slash John Boy. That is F-O-C-O dot com slash John Boy. Go gear up now. And right now our listeners can use the code word John Boy for 15% off your first order. FOCO.com. Find your fandom today. I wish I had a Cincinnati Reds FOCO straw hat because that's who we're talking about next. They're only three back of the Brewers in the National League Central after winning their fourth straight game last night. They hung on for dear life against the Boston Red Sox with a bunch of young players doing really well right now. And Ellie De La Cruz right on the precipice, perhaps, of getting called up. Is Cincinnati a team to watch over the next couple of months? I think they're definitely a team to watch. And now we know some of the guys, they brought up a lot of their prospects already. Steer and McLean. McLean just got, I think, named National League Player of the Week. He's been incredible for them at shortstop since he's been called up. Yeah, you mentioned De La Cruz. He's how many highlights do we got to see of this guy at AAA before he comes up to the big leagues? Like, what's going on? And I know it might create a log jam at the BD level, but let's make some moves. If the guy can hit like that, then let's get him to the big leagues. I think that the one thing I'd like to see out of them is somebody step up in that starting pitching staff. Ben Lively, my guy, has come up. He's come over, and or I guess not. I guess kind of come over back from overseas, then come up, and he's been doing a good job. Hunter Green's had you know some good starts, some bad starts. I think that's one of the areas where I'm still iffy on this team, but off offensively and even defensively, like I feel like this is a a, a pretty good team worth watching in a bad division, right? We keep talking about this NL Central. The Pirates are on their way down. The Brewers are just kind of treading water. The Cardinals, you know, they had a decent um, May. I think there were a couple games over 500. I expect them to get it going, but with all these guys graduating to the big leagues and making kind of like an immediate impact, they're a fun team to watch and a team that you can dream upon. If they go make some additions to their starting pitching, then we can really talk about them being true contenders. Uh, but if you haven't paid attention to them at all, definitely give them a look. There's some really fun players on the team. I just spent the previous hour before this show talking with Jonathan India for Rose Rotation. That'll be out. Love him. First all, you know that. Hot his boy. vibe is his vibe is incredible. Really is it better is. than mine. Oh, significantly. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. You know why? Because he doesn't really talk about himself nearly as much as you do. We'll get to you a little bit yeah, later. Okay. Show. Okay. Um, and it's interesting. He has been thrust into a leadership role, even though he's only in his third year, right? Vado is traveling with the team right now, but he isn't playing. And he is doing his part while he is around the team, but he's still trying to get healthy so he can get back on the field. So a lot of young guys, he said, are looking to me for answers. He goes, I'm doing my best with it. But he said, I'm only in my third year. I've talked to guys in the Reds organization who are like, that's the dude right there. 
that Jonathan India is the guy. He's not the most vocal guy, but he just exudes confidence and everybody is following him. And Ken Rosenthal wrote a really fascinating article about what's going to happen when Ellie De La Cruz gets up here because they're going to have a glut of middle infielders and they're there's talk that they're going to trade India. And we talked about that. Jonathan was very open about it. I appreciated his honesty. That'll be coming out shortly. But this isn't about that. This is about are the Reds interesting? And they are. You mentioned the starting rotation. Not one guy's got an ERA under four. Lodolo started out great in his first three starts. Then he went shitty. And now he's got a calf and a tibia injury or whatever it is. They have got to get a couple of guys on board because this is there for the taking. I believe in Matt McLean. I believe in Spencer Steer. I believe in these guys. Maybe De La Cruz gets up here. But they are there, and they're in a terrible division. And they have they also have the ability to make trades because they've gotten rid of Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray, Molly, uh, Winker, Eugenio Suarez, and they brought back a ton of youth, some of which is already on the field, some of which is right there on the cusp of it. So... If you want to make a trade for a guy who can give you some innings, maybe do it. There's a possibility that they do it. They have uh, Noelvi Marte. Is that, that's who they got back for Luis Castillo, right? I think that's right, yeah. So add another infielder there that, you know, we'll see. I mean, I don't know about trading Jonathan India. You just talked about him being a I leader on the it. team. So I think, you know, maybe you no push way. him to – I know he's dh some this year. Maybe you push him to the outfield, see if he can do that. I assume he could. At least yeah, he'd be so serviceable they, out there. In the Ken Rosenthal article, they talked about that, that they don't love his arm strength for left field. It's part of the reason that they moved him off of third base. He did, I, I'll tell you this, he said, listen, I'm a second baseman. He did say that. Oh, yeah, he, he said, wants to stay there baseman. for sure. Yeah. and There's ways to improve said. arm strength, and you know what? I think a lot of times in the outfield, arm strength is overrated. It's about how quick you release and how accurate you are. You know, very yeah. rarely does your arm strength make the play happen. Like, I'd rather be quick and I'd rather be accurate than just have some guy slinging the ball all around. So, I don't really buy into, like, the whole arm strength thing. He's got – if you're a big leaguer, you have enough arm strength to play the outfield. Well, I, I'm rooting for them. They are a, they're a fun watch right now. There's a ton of energy. Um, Diaz at the end of the bullpen has done a nice job. But I want to see – once Lodolo gets healthy, and I don't know when that's going to be, I want to see that triumvirate of Green, Lodolo, and Ashcraft yeah. go. Step on the accelerator. You are – come on. Ben Lively is third on their team in war. He's started three games. I, I don't know what happened. No. He's He figured some stuff out. I'm so happy. He's a really good dude that, you know, didn't really get a necessarily a fair shake in Philadelphia, but he's found his way back to the big leagues. I'm happy about mm -hmm. that. I was going to make one more point. Oh, yeah. Will Benson, who smoked me in a ping pong tournament two years ago in spring training. He's back up doing his thing. Yep. Yeah, good for him. I think he hit a triple last night. Uh, more impressive early part of this week. The Cubs holding the Rays to one run in two games or the A's taking the first two of their series against Atlanta. I'm so happy for the A's. I, I kind of hope they sweep Atlanta just just because I have no qualms or, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy for the Braves and how good they're doing as well. But I think it would be a funny story to talk about that, uh, especially when you have like a lot of the former best players on the A's on the Braves team. Like that's a mm -hmm. funny situation. But to me, the most impressive thing is, you know, Stroman going and do it against the Cubs and Kyle Hendricks and that bullpen, uh, shutting down the best offense in baseball. And it's not even close. I mean, I guess the Rangers are the closest thing, but the Rays lead the big leagues in every statistical category. They can score in so many different ways. So to be able to do that for two games in a row, one nothing and two one, I believe, are the the uh, uh -huh. the scores. So you, you, have, you have to be razor thin with your margin for error, and they have figured it out. And I think to me, that's much more impressive. It's only the fourth time all year that the Rays have lost consecutive games. Um, and this isn't the best pitching job somebody's done against them. The Astros blank them in consecutive games. So I want to give them some love for that. Um, but yes, the Cubs doing that with the way that the Rays have been swinging the bats as of late, 
that is really, really, really good. And Cash even said afterward, he's like, when we're a team that's been putting up the numbers that we have been and you get shut down in consecutive days, sometimes it's okay to say that the pitchers did a hell of a job. Yeah. Like, I thought that was nice and refreshing that somebody actually wanted to give credit instead of say, well, what the hell? Why didn't you do anything right? Well, the other guys drive nice cars too. So I thought that was a, I thought that was kind of cool for them. I mean, both of these are situations where you say, oh, yeah, I mean, base, that's baseball. Like the A is like, yeah. For what they've been this year to go and do to take the first two from the Braves, you could just say, "Ah, oh, it's baseball. It's going to happen sometimes." So, but the Rays leading in homers and stolen bases—that's like my favorite stat right now going in the big leagues. I know. Um, yeah, Rysel Iglesias, by the way, just couldn't find home plate for the uh, for the Braves. That's why they struggled and ended up losing in a walk off. Before we walk on out of here, we have to say goodbye. We're going to have a new champ in the Blitzball battle world. That's right. The tandem of Trevor Plouffe and Dan Rourke, my brethren on this show. One, a star in front of the mic. The other, a producer who does an outstanding job. They lost the hook line sinkers yesterday, and it had the Warehouse Games channel a buzz. That ball's hammered. Oh! <laughs> a three-run oh, shot! And Davis, hook line sinkers, they have taken an early oh! shot against the champs. I gave myself a pep talk and got hit. Not the way he wanted to leave. Perhaps in need of a little bit of an attitude adjustment, but still you cannot deny the run this man has been on. Hold your Both head for high. an individual and team effort. A tip of the cap to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks that was for the very mutual classy. respect back. Mutual respect. <laughs> oh Dude, boy, I totally forgot you flipped us off on the walkout. <laughs> that was that was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, is there a question? Your, your is there a question yeah, here? Why don't you put your blitzball battle run into perspective for us? Well, you know, the first two Blitzball uh, extravaganzas, I was locked in. And I wanted nothing more than to beat Jimmy and Jake. That's That was basically what I focus on most. Uh, so you take the first two down, then all I heard from fans and everyone is, you guys can't win again. It's not fair. It's not fair. Well, guess what? I didn't win this time. And I'm pissed about it. I don't like that. So guess what's going to happen? Blitzball four is coming. Okay. There's some decent teams now. A lot of there's been a lot of blitz ball played. We got ice. Looks really good. Hookland sinker looks really good. The Como captains look really good. I'm into practice and come into Blitzball Four ready to freaking go. I'm gonna go get Vinny back from Macaw. We're gonna run it back, and then we'll see who's laughing. At the end of this one, I still might flip you guys off just because I am the bad boy of Blitzball, no matter what happened this tournament. Okay. Y'all got what you wanted. Forgotten, rotten, not in the finals. That's the last time I'm going to give you what you want. I'm just going to go out and perform BB4, put a banner up already. Just what did you say before? Give us the same size rings, bitches. Blitzball for book it right now. I'm taking it home. He has called his shot, people. You heard it right here exclusively on Baseball Today. Ploof going for his third title in four seasons. Mark it down. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people out mm. there saying, I'll take that risk. Do people hate me in Blitzball or do they like me? I can't tell. A little bit of both, huh? I don't know. You are a polarizing figure, young man. Yes. Polarizing. <sighs> Good news. We are back on AMP, everybody. Starting on Thursday, June 1st, you can download it. It is also now available on Android. It's great. Nice. There is a record mode as well. So if you miss it that day and you want to hear the extra stuff that you get after the show, which is always fun, where we chop it up with our community. So make sure you get back on board on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. We'll probably go most days at noon Eastern for an hour. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we will go at 1130 Eastern for an hour, but join us live. We understand that the app has been upgraded, that uh, it's better quality, 
We appreciate that certainly from our AMP partners, but we miss talking to you guys. So make sure you join us, right, Bluffy? Absolutely. I, I've definitely missed the chat and kind of feeling like the community is there with us. We know the community is listening to our shows, but to being able to have them there and, and being able to interact is something that we definitely miss. Look, we're the kings of AMP and we're back. We cannot wait. I can't wait. So we will see you live on the AMP app on Thursday for our one of a kind producer, Dan Rourke. And the man who has been knocked off the Blitzball Battle Mountaintop, at least for now, but will return. You heard it here first. That is Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Thursday on Baseball Today.